is the idea of dependencies. This is a really big thing. Um, very rarely do teams work siloed and not have all sorts of uh, inter-team dependencies and, and these chains of, of, and sequence of events that need to happen to get uh, your product uh, over the finish line. Um, what I'll do is I'm just going to move my level of hierarchy down. We can actually change the, the tier that we're looking at. So I'll just move down to the epic level. That should be quite familiar with most people. Uh, and in the epic level, what we have is, you'll see these little badges, they're called, these little numbers on the end of some of the pieces of work. Uh, and what that does is that tells me there's a dependency. If it's on uh, the trailing end, it means that this thing is blocking something else. If it's on the leading end, it means it's being blocked by something else. And um, what we can do here is have a look at, I can see that um, this uh, epic uh, blocks iOS 9, which is one underneath, and I can see the status of it, and who the assignees, and I've got a lead time of 13 days. That's, that's good. That means I've got 13 days grace between when this one finishes and then iOS 9, which is the next one down here, starts. Now you'll see that that's got a two in it. That's because it's been blocked by this one above it that we know about. It's also telling me it's been blocked by another piece of work that's not in this plan. And that's new to version three of portfolio. It used to be uh, in portfolio version two that you could only see dependencies from the work that was in your plan. Now we get a much truer view. So I can actually see this other work out with this plan that has, uh, that could bear some uh, influence into when this piece of work can start. What you'll see is if the people working on this particular piece of work were to uh, maybe not finish it in time, you'll see as soon as I move that out, it turns red. And now I'm seeing it because it's red because now I've got a negative lead time. So I've got a lag. I've got 10 days uh, short, basically, to start my next piece of work. So what I need to do is, as a portfolio user or an advanced roadmaps user, is come in here, have a look at that, and then have conversations, see where those red dependencies are, there's a problem there, talk to the people involved and reschedule our work based on that information. The great thing we can do as well in Portfolio is um, we can filter out, now I'll talk a bit more of this later, understanding how to filter and slice and dice your view is super important at basically get, you know, getting the right information so you can make the right decisions out of Portfolio. And one of the things you can do is you can filter by dependencies. So like I say, just show me all the things that have dependencies. Now, if I was going to have a scrum of scrum meeting, this is what I'll do. I'll have my dependencies uh, on show and we'll have it up on the screen and we'll go around a person from each team or each squad and we'll talk about the dependencies to make sure that everyone's aligned and you know if someone wants to finish, uh, sorry, start a piece of work in a particular sprint or a particular iteration, that the people who are dependent are, are aware of that and do their work in the right time. Even better is the fact that we can actually uh, filter by just a specific issue and include the dependency chain. So what that will do is it will filter and show me all of the issues before and after that are affected. It's almost like a, the critical path if you think about it in waterfall planning. So I can get a real view of all the things that impact when that piece of work uh, is going to be worked on. Really useful. Uh, way of getting uh, some insight into those things that are traditionally quite hard to manage without going and asking every team individually. The other thing that's really useful is the idea of releases. So once you've got used to working with dependencies, I would then introduce the concept of releases. And releases, or versions as they're sometimes called in JIRA, frustratingly they use different names uh, in different places depending on where you look. Uh, sometimes a lot of people are put off by using them. The, the word release is very kind of software heavy. I want to release some software. But really what it's saying is it's a milestone or a deadline, any point in time that you've committed to your client that you're going to get some work done by, we use a release for that. And you'll see here, um, I've got a release where I put in a fixed date. I'm going to say this iOS beta release, uh, we're going to release on the 31st of July. It's a fixed date, so you know, come hell or high water, we're going to be releasing on that date. And if I have a look in my roadmap view, I can see here is, um, there is that release. That's that line in the sand when we're going to release things by. I can see it looks green at the moment. That's a good thing for me. Um, what I might do is I might just add another column on here for releases. Um, let me go back up to the epic view, maybe a bit cleaner. Um, and I can see here this uh, piece of work, my new mobile platform initiative, that's been assigned to that release. And um, if something was to happen and we didn't manage to get that finished in time, 
that's going to go red. It's going to tell me we have a problem, I'm off track. And on my releases tab, it's going to show me that that's off track. Now, what I'm doing there is very obvious because I literally just dragged one thing past the, the release date. But when you've got a release that's made up of lots of tasks and stories from different uh, teams, it's very hard to kind of get that information. But by using advanced roadmaps, you can get that early indication if you're not on track to do something and then do something about it. So I might see in three months time, all the work that we currently have assigned to that particular release, we're not, we haven't got the capacity to get it done uh, unless we go and tweak things. And it's those levers, that iron triangle I'm talking about again, where you can go and say, maybe I'll, I'll put some more people on it, or maybe we'll de-scope, or we'll change the order of things because the dependencies are playing havoc with a release date. That allows you to have those better conversations earlier on. I think I'll just point out here, you'll see at the top, um, Portfolio's a really good tool, or advanced roadmap, sorry, I'm gonna keep doing that. Advanced roadmaps is a really good tool at actually um, pointing out where there are issues in your data. You can see here, I've got 27 warnings, um, and that's uh, these little warnings over here. Now, if you roll over the top of it, it will give you some indication. Now, in this case, it's saying, um, this issue is okay, but it's children has warnings. So we'll have a look underneath. Um, and we can see here, uh, ADR 15, this ends eight months after its parent, iOS 39. And we can see that there on the timeline. Uh, it's, its parent is scheduled to finish then, and it's further out. So that doesn't make sense. And this is quite common. It's usually because we've not updated the parent in some way. They, the, we've changed our plans, we started working on it, but we have not kept, the, the left hand hasn't been kept in sync with the right hand. And what you end up with is a mismatch here. So we need to kind of keep on top of these warnings to make sure that our data makes sense because some people will be looking at just the initiative level and they'll think that that date is okay, but it's not because we've said that the children are not going to finish till later. Incidentally, if you make changes uh, within portfolio, it won't let you do this. It, it will actually make the, the parent extend out beyond that. But if somebody changes it natively in the JIRA project, uh, it's going to just point out that that's a problem for you. Uh, another example here, um, we have an unresolved issue after the end date. Um, so what it's saying is the issue hasn't been resolved yet, it's still open, and yet the target end date is passed. Well, those things can't both be true. So it's pointing out and saying you either need to update when this is the target end date, or you need to uh, close the issue. Again, use your filters. You can filter just by warnings and work your way through until you have no warnings left. That way you know your data is in good nick. Data quality, as we'll talk about a bit later, is um, really, really important uh, for, not just for getting advanced roadmaps to work, but just in general for you to get good insights into your work so you can make the best decisions. So that's a really helpful kind of tip there.